What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be building some arrows and uh, we're going to go a little bit down the rabbit hole of heavy arrows, high FOC, as well as arrow spin. Uh, we're going to talk about why all that stuff matters and uh, why I chose this specific configuration. This is probably going to be a long one, but let's get at it. So first I wanted to go over my original setup. By now everybody in the world's heard of Black Eagle Arrows, but I've been shooting this Rampage shaft for a few years now. Definitely uh, wanted to stay with this shaft. This is a 300 spine .001 straightness and it comes with a 50 grain half outsert. Uh, I was running factory fletching and a lighted knock. That setup come in at about 416 grains and was about 13 and a half to 13 and three quarters FOC. While that is definitely inside a widely accepted FOC range, I wanted to go with something a little bit heavier, a little bit higher FOC without sacrificing too much speed. A lot of people get caught up in speed, but in reality, uh, speed is not what continues to carry this arrow through the target. So what I've come up with is using the Black Eagle Focus System or front of center outsert system. And this comes with three things. Uh, you get a stainless steel retention post that's threaded on the front and the back. And you get an aluminum outsert collar along with a stainless steel screw. And so the insert goes inside your arrow. The screw screws this aluminum outsert to your post. And this collar slides over your shaft about a half inch. This entire system uh, without any added weight is 50 grains heavier than your half outsert that you get from the factory. Uh, but what this allows you to do is add in increments brass weights to the back of the retention post to allow you to adjust your weight to get it where you want. So I knew I wanted to get to 500 grains and with just this system installed I was about 470 grains. So I ordered some 30 grain weights and added to the back of it and it gave me almost exactly 500 grains per arrow. So I did two things to the rear of the arrow. I added Zinger 2.0 four fletch left helical veins and a six inch wrap. The six inch wrap is gonna serve three purposes. One, it's gonna give me a little bit more visibility if I shoot this arrow into the dirt. Two, it's gonna add a little bit more weight to the back of the arrow. And three, it helps these zinger fletches stay put, you know, just a little bit better. The reason I went with a four fletch, six degree helical was I wanted this arrow to stabilize as quickly as possible as soon as it left the bow. Now, the reason I went with a left helical is my bow naturally spins the arrow to the left. Now, when you buy a factory fletched arrow, you usually can't even see it, but there is about a one to two degree right offset on the veins. Now, what this is gonna do is if your bow is naturally spinning that arrow to the left, then that arrow is gonna have to double work to stop that arrow from spinning left to go back right again. So I didn't want that extra drag, so I went ahead and went with a left helical. So one may ask, how the hell do you know that your bow naturally spins your arrow left? That's actually quite simple. You take a bear shaft, make a line or a mark on the end of your shaft. You stand about six foot from your target. You shoot it into your target and you go up to it and look and see which direction your arrow rotated in. It's really simple. I highly recommend it to everybody who is considering shooting helical veins. So I have a dozen new Rampage shafts here and I'm going to go cut these to length on my homemade arrow cutting jig. Stay tuned for a video on that and then we'll come back here and I'll show you how to install everything we just talked about and then we'll go over the numbers that uh, we come up with after our build. All right, so we're going to start with the easiest step first, and uh, it's a good idea to do this first so you make sure that you're not putting the tip in the wrong end. You're going to want something neoprene, kind of like a mouse pad. Peel it off, lay it on your pad, take an arrow, line it up on the end, and then just make sure that your arrow is square with the wrap. And then whenever it's lined up, start rolling. 
and I like to go about halfway and then just start kind of pushing on the wrap. And then I like to roll it a couple of times. There you go. I'll do that one more time. Line up your end first, then square your arrow with the wrap. Start rolling. It's as easy as it gets. All right, so we've got our arrows wrapped and the next step is going to be adding our inserts with our 30 grain brass weights. So you'll need a couple of things to get this done. Number one is going to be a 564 Allen. I'm using the glue from Black Eagle. It's a Instabon IR 1500 for my inserts. I'm using red 272 Loctite for my brass inserts. Now, if you already have your arrows established and you already have the focus system installed, then you're going to need this very long 564 Allen. Black Eagle sells this, I think, for like 15 bucks. It's got a steel shaft with a carbon sleeve on it, so it's a really nice uh, tool to have. But uh, we're not going to need this today. We're going to go ahead and put thread locker on our brass weights and install them into our insert. And then we will go ahead and put our insert into our arrow. So you'll want to grab a paper towel so you can wipe all the excess on it without getting it everywhere. But we'll go ahead and we'll take our red Loctite and put a little dab on our threads and screw it into the back. Make sure it's into the back of the insert. We'll take our Allen key and just put it in there as tight as we can. And we'll just kind of roll it around and get the excess Loctite off and move on to the next one. Doesn't take much of this stuff. You're not trying to uh, lock it in there forever, so. All right. What I like to do is go ahead and stick it in there a little bit, just a touch. Put you some glue on there. As you're going in, twist it, push it all the way in, wipe off your excess. Now this can get kind of messy after you've done a few, so we'll just stick it in there a little bit, add some glue, stick it in, twist it. Push it on in, wipe off your excess. And then I highly recommend that you let these dry really well before working with them. So one thing I did want to add to the weight system is, you know, you can use these without any weight or you can pick one weight and run with that weight. You can keep adding to it and uh, you know until you get the weight that you're looking for. These weights are stackable. You can get them in 10 grain, 20 grain, and 30 grain. So, so we've got all of our inserts in and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put our Zinger four fletches on there while we're waiting on our inserts to dry and then we'll move on to putting our collars on. Put some hand sanitizer on your paper towel. Kind of roll the end of your arrow not too much, and then slip it on. And I like my fletching to be one inch below the end. So just keep adjusting exactly one inch and then so one thing i do is i look down the end of it to make sure that the fletching is twisted the right way 
uh, because you are torquing it a little bit. There is a possibility that it could twist on the shaft and throw off your helical. You just kind of play with it till it's right and then you're good to go. Exactly one inch from the end. So we'll go ahead and do the next one. So just roll the end of your arrow in your hand sanitizer. Put your fletching on. Exactly one inch. Look down the back of the shaft, twist your fletching so it's right. Good to go. These things go on so easy and it beats the heck out of having to use a fletching jig. And if I tear one of these, you just pull it off and slip another one on. For whatever reason, this gets bent and memory sets in. You just take this off, set it in hot water, and it'll go right back to its original state. In my opinion, these things are a tremendous jump in the fletching market. All right, so we got everything fletched up, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and put our collars on and our knocks. So we're going to go ahead and put our knocks on first. These arrows do come with orange knocks, and uh, since I put the orange wrap on there, I kind of felt like that was too much orange. So I ordered some smoke knocks to kind of offset that orange at the end for aesthetics only, but you know, I'm kind of picky. So when you have four fletching, I don't want uh, to have a vein up because then you also have a vein down. So that's probably not gonna work with my wrist. I like to put my string right between two of these fletches. So I'll line that up, push it in, check it and then when not tuning I may need to turn this to get it to tune out so we'll go ahead and put the other one in all right so to put our collars on you're going to need a 3 30 seconds Allen the screw that comes with it and your collar and so basically all you're gonna do is slide the tapered end of your collar over your shaft and then you can put your screw on your Allen, put it in there, and then just kind of bump it so it's good and tight. So again, you're taking your collar, taking your screw, put it on your Allen, slide your collar over your shaft, Put it in. Once it's tight, kind of bump it. And then you can go ahead and put your field point in or your broadhead, whatever you choose to put in. And these arrows are complete. All right, so now that we've got our arrows built, um, I wanted to kind of explain for you guys who don't really understand what FOC is. Uh, I don't want to get too technical, but uh, basically front of center is how much weight is in front of the center point of your arrow. And so what this does is the further forward your balance point is on the arrow, it takes less energy for the back of the arrow to stabilize that arrow when it's in flight. So if your balance point is closer to the center, you can get a real erratic flight pattern and uh, a loss of accuracy. You know, there may be a point where you get too far forward where you also lose accuracy there, but um, you know, I believe that somewhere between 15 and 20 is probably your peak performance area. So I'm gonna throw some numbers around about my original setup and compare the two and uh, tell you why I think this setup is much better than my original. So I've got all this information on a uh, handwritten screenshot from my iPad and uh, I'll put it on the screen now and then we'll talk about it. Uh, hopefully this will be really informational and uh, maybe even inspirational. So we'll see. All right, so my factory setup was 416 grains, which gave me a 13.75% FOC. My launch speed was 274 feet per second, and kinetic energy was 69.61 foot-pounds and 0.508 slugs of momentum. 
Now, at 20 yards, uh, the same arrow had 267 feet per second, 66.1 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, and 0.495 slugs. Now, when I moved on from my factory setup, I did it two different ways. I did it with just the focus system, and then I did it again with the focus system plus 30 grains. So, with the focus system only, I was at 465 grains, and 16.5% FOC. Launch speed was 265 feet per second with 72.4 foot-pounds of kinetic energy and 0.547 slugs of momentum. Then at 20 yards, the focus system only was 253 feet per second, 66.03 foot-pounds of energy, and 0.522 slugs of momentum. Then we moved on to the focus system plus the 30 grain insert weight, and that gave us 495 grains total and 18.5% FOC. Launch speed was 260 feet per second, 74.23 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, and 0.571 slugs of momentum. Then at 20 yards, we had 251 feet per second, 69.18 foot-pounds of kinetic energy, and 0.551 slugs of momentum. And you can see that this has increased the whole time on kinetic energy and momentum, although we did have a slight decrease in feet per second. So I did some math here uh, to see what our gains and losses were. I really would have liked to do this at 30, 40, and 50 yards, but uh, I was only set up to do this at 20. But we we had a 19% increase in weight on our launch. We had a loss of 5.4% of our speed. We had a gain of 6.6% in kinetic energy and a whopping 12.4% gain in momentum. At 20 yards, we had a loss of 6.4% in speed, a gain in 4.7% in kinetic energy, and again, a whopping 11.3% in momentum. You know, we added 80 grains to the front of this arrow and we lost 5% speed, we gained 6% uh, kinetic energy, and we gained 12% momentum. So, you know, to me, that's a minimum loss for a high gain. Like I said, though, I didn't want to go too technical into this, but uh, I'm going to link down in the description a uh, link to Servicide, and they did some really extensive testing. They have some really good data in there, and that is really kind of what pushed me over that edge of wanting to dive into this. Hopefully, uh, this will serve as some really good information for you guys, not necessarily trying to steer anybody in any direction, being there's uh, 101 ways to set up an arrow. So uh, I'm just here sharing my experience. You guys, please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video, number one. Let me know what FOC you're running, how heavy your arrow is, what your bow setup is, what kind of system you're running on your arrow. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for my homemade arrow cutting jig uh, video coming up soon. But until then, we'll see you guys next time in Rob's Man Cave.